Okay. 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 And we went over some of the set theory portion, like uh, intersection of two sets, and then after the mutually exclusive sets and union of two sets, and like this. And then after, let me just go through this book chapter. Uh, then after, this is chapter one, this is chapter two chapter one, sorry, and then after we started chapter two and went over this 2.1 article. Probability, and as I told you that we went over the sample space and then after you can see over here how the sample points are making the sample space and then after tree diagram, and then after we went over some other examples, how to write, if the sample space is too large, you can write it down in abbreviated words like this, x order per x, y, such that x square plus y square is less than or equal to four, mean all the points within and on the circle. You cannot count all the points, but you can write it down in this way so that you can find, you can figure it out, the sample space. And then after we went over again, the T diagram for three items, the first item, second item, the third item and number of points are there which are making the sample space and then after we went over oops, events and uh, event is nothing but the sample space complement of the event means uh, event which are not outside your set a then the intersection mutually exclusive union of two events means considering everything and the example which did last time this is the example we covered last time. And then after one more example is there in the book. And then after we have the exercise problems, I gave you some problems. Problem number 2.1, 2.2, 2.3, 2.4, 2.11, 2.13, and 2.14. I would like to request you to go over these problems, <clears throat> to go over these problems. Um, let me just go over this 2.1, 2, 3, and 4. And then after I say 2.11, that means this one. This is the example 2.11. And then after 2.13 and 14, 13 is this one, 14 is here. And I think there is more than enough to understand this concept. If you want, I can go over one of the examples over here. Let me start with just the first example. And other examples, they are quite simple. So let me just start uh, setting my whiteboard. And then after we will switch over to the next article. Today's lecture is very, very important. I would say it is the heart of this chapter that is called permutation and combination. So that is very important. So please try to pay a full attention and try to go over the things which I'm going to cover over here. So let's go for this example. Just try to read the example, list the elements of each of the following sample space spaces, the set of intersection between one and 50 divisible by eight. Now you can see that between one and 50, how many possibilities are there, which are, how many numbers are there which are divisible by eight? One is eight itself. Then after the table of eight, right? Eight to the 16, so 16 is multiplied by uh, divisible by eight. 24 is divisible by eight. 32 is divisible by eight. 40 is divisible by eight because eight fives are 40, eight six are 48 and that's it because eight sevens are 56 and that is out of 50. It's not within the, within the range of one to 50. So we have to explore those numbers which are more than 50. So my simple space here S equal to in the curly uh, sorry to bother you. Are you sharing your uh, board or I'm is not uh, I'm not sharing the board. I'm just okay. This. Just want to confirm. Okay, that's fine. So S is equal to curly bracket 8, 16, 24, 32, 40, and 48. These are the elements of the sample space. If you want, I can share my board also, but problem is over here. Okay, second one is S equal to collection of all X such that X square plus four X minus five equal to zero. So you need to take the uh, factor of this part, X square plus four X minus five equal to zero. Quadratic equation, that means you're gonna get X plus five 
x minus 1 is equal to 0, right? That's the uh, factors. That means x is equal to negative 5 and 1. So here your sample space will be negative 5 and 1. If you go for example number C, the set of outcomes v when a coin is tossed until a tail or three heads appear. See, until a tail or three heads appears. That means it is possible a toy, uh, sorry, the set of outcomes when a coin is tossed until a tail. It may be possible that if you toss a coin, that means in the first attempt, you can get tail. So just stop it, just stop it. So it is tail. Otherwise, it is may, it may possible that if you toss a coin, first you get head and then tail. So first is tail, then head and tail, so H and T. It may be possible that if you toss a coin, you may get head, second time head, and then third time tail, right? It may be possible. And the fourth possibility is, None of them would be the tail, head, head, and head for all three times. And that's what it, uh, it is asked to us, that set of outcome when a coin is tossed until a tail or three heads, either one tail or three heads. That means our set, I'm going to write all these things on whiteboard, just wait, give me a couple, couple minutes. Then set collection of all X such that X is a continent. How many continents are there in the world? Seven continents. So you can write it down in terms of a set like North America, South America, Europe, Asia, Africa, Australia, Antarctica, like this. That's the set. Then S equal to collection of all X such that 2X minus 4 greater than or equal to 0. It means if you take two common X minus 2 is greater than or equal to 0, that means X is greater than or equal to 2. That means this first equation, linear equation says that X is greater than or equal to 2 means Two is inclusive, two, three, four, five, six, and so on. So all the numbers to greater than or equal to two. And here it says X is strictly less than one, means all the number less than one, even one is exclusive. So what is the common thing between these two? Nothing is common because here the first thing says that every number greater than or equal to two means you're going to get two, three, four, five, six, and so on, what it may be. And here you're going to get all the numbers which are less, strictly less than one. There is a gap between one and two one exclusive to inclusive, there is a gap. And that's why the common thing is nothing, that means empty set. So S is nothing but the empty set. That's the example of empty set. So that's how you can solve the problem. So let me just go over my whiteboard. So very quickly, I can uh, let you know about the solution. So my whiteboard is over here. So first example that was, uh, exercise 2.1, S is equal to the numbers divisible by eight, right? The set of all integers, sorry, list the elements of each of the following sample space, the set of all integers between one to 50 divisible by eight. Between one to 50 and divisible by eight, that means as I told you, eight, 16, 32, 40, and 48, and I have to stop because I can't go beyond 50. Then after, this is my part A. Then after part B says that, the set S is equal to, S is equal to collection of all X such that X square plus four X minus five is equal to zero. So that is equal to collection of all X such that X plus five, because as I told you that we are taking the factors and that is equal to collection of all X such that X is equal to either one or X is equal to negative five. That means my set over here, that is nothing but negative five and one. Usually we write smaller number first, bigger number later. So that's why I wrote it down negative five and one, otherwise you can write in the reverse way too. Third one is the set of outcomes when a coin is tossed until a tail or three heads appear. So a tail, or three heads, three heads. Tail we denote by T, head we denote by H. And so my sample space S will be, if you toss a coin, you can you may get first attempt tail, or it may possible second attempt, first attempt head, second tail, or it may possible first two attempts head and then tail. So you are getting at least one tail. When tail comes, you have to stop. Otherwise you have to go off up to three heads. So these are the sample space. That's what I explained to you. And then after the last part is, second last part is set of all X, all S such like that, collection of all X such like that, X is a continent. X is a continent. As I told you that here you can write North America, then South America, right? Then after you can write EU, Europe, then after you can write Africa, then after you can write 
Australia, then after you can write Australia and Antarctica, Antarctica, right? Antarctica and Asia. So these are seven continents, Antarctica and Antarctica and Asia. These are seven continents. So you can write it down in this form. The last part is the set of all X, all S, uh, S is equal to set of all X such like that 2X minus four is greater than or equal to zero and, and means intersection. X is strictly less than one. I told you X is less than one. That means it is something like this. Here it is one and all the elements, they are over here. Here two X minus, that means you can write two common and X minus two is greater than or equal to zero. That means you can write, you can divide by two both the sides. You're going to get X is greater than or equal to two. Two is number over here is greater than or equal to two means two is inclusive and all these numbers. You can see nothing is common between these two. And that's why this set is nothing but the empty set or you can write phi. So that is the example. That is the first example. I can quickly go over example 2.3 just to give you some more flavors. And then after we can switch over to the next article. So let me uh, remove this part. Uh, let me erase this one. Just wait, let me just save in a folder and uh, then let me clear the drawings. Okay. So next is now example 2.3. If you read your book, you can come to know example 2.3, that is nothing but which of the following events are equal? So you are given four events, A, B, C, and D. And out of these four events, you need to make sure which of them, which of these two events, they are equal. That means other two are not same as the, the other two events. So my first event equal to, that is given one and three. Okay, I accept, oh, my, my bad, one and three. One and three. My second event B is equal to X such that X is a number on a die. X is a number on a die. How many numbers are there on the die? Six numbers, right? One, two, three, four, five, and six. X is the number on a die. Don't count this come. Okay, then after C is equal to, um, C is equal to those X such like that X square minus four X plus three equal to zero x square minus 4x plus 3 is equal to 0. If you take the factor over here, you're going to get x minus 3 and x minus 1 is equal to 0. And that means here you're going to get collection of all x such that x is equal to 1 and 3. That means your sample space is 1 and 3, right? And then after event D says that D equal to capital D, you can write Capital, let me erase this one. This doesn't look good. So let me erase this part. Let me erase this one too. And let's just go back again over here. So D is equal to those X such like that X is the number of heads when six coins are tossed. Okay. Collection of all X such like that X is the number of heads, number of heads when six coins are tossed when six coins are tossed. That means I can write over here, six coins are tossed. That means naturally, <laughs> either you can get zero or one or two or three or five or six, right? So six, uh, X is the number, right? X is the number of heads, right? X is the yes. number of heads when six coins are tossed because whenever you have two, one coin, you have two possibilities. One is head, one is tail. If you toss coin, it may possible first time you may get tail, means zero head, or first time head, or head, head. So these are the numbers. But you can see over here, out of these four events, you can see A and C, they are same because they have the same elements. Right? And that was the question that how many events are same. So these you can answer these questions. And now I think time has to switch over to the next article. Our next article that is the counting sample points. I would appreciate if you can go over the rest of the examples which I give it to you. All these examples, they are very much related to our study. So 
let me now uh, skip this part. Let me save this part. Okay, and let me clear my drawing. And let me close this one and let's stop sharing this white ball and let's start sharing our slides. So our slides are like this counting sample points. So first of all, what are the things we are going to learn in this article? Let me go over very, very quickly. <clears throat> first of all, we are going to see here the multiplication rule. Multiplication rule, that means if an operation can be performed in n1 ways, and if the each of these n1 ways, the second operation is performed in n2 ways, and each of these n2 ways, the third operation is performed in n3 ways, each of these n3 ways, the fourth operation is performed in n4 ways, each of these n4 ways, the fifth operation is performed in n5 ways. That means the total operation can be performed in the multiplication way n1 times, n2 times, n3 times, dot, 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 and k times. So this way, k operations can be performed. Here, just I have just mentioned two. Then after we are going to extend the same idea. So that is the that is called the multiplication rule. And then after we are going to see here tree diagram using the multiplication room where rule because in the first chapter we went over the, over tree diagram and try to fix our sample points, but that is not actually required. Sometimes you can use the multiplication rule and try to get the answer just within a fraction of moments. Multiplication rule in a k different events, as I told you, as I told you, we are going to learn this one too with some examples. Then after uh, some uh, factorial notation, because this factorial notation will lead you to the concept of permutation. And then after permutation is nothing but the arrangement. Whenever we have permutation at that time, make sure that order is important. Then after we are going to learn one more concept that is called the combination where order is not that important. So what is the difference between combina uh, permutation and combination? All these things I will let you know. We are going to focus on more on permutation because combination is just, I would say, a part of the permutation. But I will let you know. So permutation, whenever uh, events are in a circular form, circular form at that time, your permutation, there is nothing but total and minus one factorial. n minus one factorial and uh, in how many dis distinct uh, permutations can be made from the letters some letters will be provided to you and we are going to perform those kind of uh, permutations and like this that's what we are going to say some here one pair one number is there m a m a i can write any of the statistics i can write mathematics any of the words are there and then after Based on this one, we are going to find some permutations. Then after uh, the number of ways of partitioning a set of n objects into R cells with n1 elements in the first, n2 in the second, n3 in the third, like this, and n1, n2, n3 up to nr. So all are, if you count this one, n1 plus n2 plus nr, you're going to get your sample space, total number of sample space that is equal to n, like this. That's what we are going to see. But whenever this n1, n2, they are distinct elements, n1 and n2. But whenever you have just two partitions, one is, n and r cells. So one is r, another is n minus r. So n minus r plus r, again, you're going to get to uh, n. So whenever you have just two partitions, n minus r and r, in that case, it is called the combination. We are going to learn that part too. So this is the today's work. And this is, you can see over here, whenever combination is there at that time, as I told you, order is not important. The formula is given like this, how the formula is being developed. That also we will learn. And then after some example based on section three. So this is the total outlook of counting sample points. And now let me start with our study. So let me again share my book. The book article is like this. Counting the sample points. In counting sample points, as I told you that first of all, we can learn here, we can learn here if an operation can be performed in N1 ways, and if each of these ways, a second operation can be performed in N2 ways, means total number of operations can be performed in N1 times N2 ways. So N1 and N2 like this. Just for example, look at the example over here, how many sample points are there in the sample space when a pair of dice is thrown once. So pair of dice, you have two dice, and if you throw 
like this. That means what is the possibility for N1? N1 that is the numbers you are getting on the first die. N2 is the, pos N2 is the possibility that numbers you are getting on the second die. And you are throwing both the dice simultaneously. You have two dice on your hand and you are throwing both the dice simultaneously. So there, well, how, how many possibilities are there for N1? It could be one, two, three, four, five, six, whatever it may be. It, it could be any one of, one of these numbers out of six. That means total possibilities for N1 is six. Now, based on this N1, what will happen for N2? Again, N2 is the another die. That means another, we have six possibilities. That means total number of events, N1 times N2, six times six, that is equal to 36 possible ways. So how many sample points are there in the sample space when a pair of die is thrown, uh, thrown once? The first die can land face up in any one of N1 equal to six ways for each of these six ways, right? Now N2, for if suppose N1 is equal to one, but N2 may start with one, two, three, four, five, or six, it could be anything. Second die can also land up, uh, land face up in N2 equal to six ways. So total number of faces that is N1 times N2, six times six, that is equal to 36. And that is called the multiplicative rule, multiplication rule for two events. You can extend the same events for K number of, uh, same rule for K number of events. Then after the next one is, the developer of a new subdivision offers prospective home buyers a choice of Tudor, rustic, colonial, and traditional exterior styling in ranch, two-story, and split-level floor plans. What will happen? So th this uh, developer, he's offering four types of houses. Uh, you can see it, Tudor, rustic, colonial, and traditional exterior, right? For each of this one, for Tudor, for rustic, for colonial, each of this one we have, he is offering either you can go for a range or you can go for two story or you can go for split level or you can go for four plants, floor plants, right? So if you look at the three diagrams, you are going to get like this and you can get the sample space two door and one, two, three and rustic and one, two, three, like this, right? And you can go for all these sample points and total sample points, how many sample points you will be having? So two door one, then two, then three and total you will be having 12 sample points. Am I right? You can do exactly the same thing using this multiplicative rule because my first event, first event, the developer is offering four type of uh, subdivisions. That is two door, rustic, colonial, and traditional. That is my N1. So N1 equal to four. Then after my N2, out of the, for all of this one, for all these events N1, we have the subdivision, we have the styling, exterior styling. Some of them could be range or two story or split level. You can choose any one of these, right? So N2, how many choices are there for N2? Three. So N1 is four, N2 is three. Product rule says that, multiplication rule says that N1 times M2. So it is four times three, that is equal to 12. So in naturally you can get the answer equal to 12. Look at here, N1 times N2 equal to 12 possible homes, possible outcomes. So this way using multiplication rule, sometimes you can avoid your long calculations like tree diagram and like this. Tree diagram is good to understand the problem, but ultimately once you are good with uh, this understanding, then after you can just find your possible outcomes, sample points very quickly using this multiplicative rule. Then after the next example is, uh, you can see here that uh, I think I would like to go over this example. 22 members member club needs to elect a chair and a treasurer. Okay, good. Please guys pay attention over here. 22 members club. In one club, we have 22 members and they are going to elect. They are going to elect two guys. One is for the chair position. Second one is for, for the treasurer position. How many different ways can be used or can these two be selected? How many different ways these two can be selected, right? First thing is very sure that suppose we have 22 out possibilities out of this 22, right? Suppose we choose first guy, for the chair, that means the rest of the possibilities are 21, right? So for chair position, suppose we have 20 out because total number of members in the club, they are 22. Out of this 22, one is selected as a chair. Once he is selected, 21 positions are left out for the position of treasurer. That means my N1 is equal to 22, N2 is equal to 21. So N1 times N2, that is equal to 462 different ways that one can find the position for a chair as well as a treasurer, right? And this, these are just two events, but as I told you that you can extend the same idea for multiple events 
n1, n2, n3, up to nk. And these multiple events can be given over here. You can see one of the examples, the multiplication rule may be extended uh, to cover any number of operations. Suppose, for instance, the customer wishes to buy a new cell phone and can choose n1 equal to five brands, n2 equal, n equal to five sets of capability. n1 equal to five brands, right? n1 is five, n2 is five sets of capability, and n3 equal to four colors. Now you have three choices, see here? Five brands, out of five brands, you can pick one. n2 equal to five sets of capability, different capabilities for different sets for all these different five brands. And then n3 equal to different colors are there, gray, silver, black, right? Uh, violet, could be anything. So my total three events, N1, N2, and N3, that is given five into five into four. So total 100 different ways for a customer to order one of these forms. The generalization multiplication rule covering Q operations is stated in this way, N1 times N2 times NK. And one of the examples is over here. You have multiple examples. Second example is the same. Sam is going to assemble a computer by himself. He has the choice of chips from two brands, a hard drive from front memory, for hard drive from four, memory from three, and accessory bundle from five local stores. How many series? N1, N2, N3. You can write like this. So it's a very simple way, just using product rule, multiplicative rule, you can get the answer of this question. You can get the answer of this question. My next example is really pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, please try to understand this thing. This example says that how many E1, E1 is more important, how many E1 four digit numbers can be formed from the digits 0, 1, 2, 5, 6, and 9 if each digit can be used one only once. Guys, please try to understand this example. It is given over there in the book, but I think it is better if you can understand using some logics. I repeat, how many E14 digit numbers can be formed from the digits 0, 1, 2, 5, 6, 0, 1, 2, 5, 6, and 9, 0, 1, 2, 5, 6, and 9. It says that since the number must be we have only n1 equal to three choices, right? Number must be e1, n1 is equal to three choices, three choices for the unit position. Um, first of all, let me give you the solution and then I will, I will explain to you how we are getting the solution. So since the number must be e1, we have only n1 equal to three position. What is n1? I'll let you know because N1, that is my unit position, N2 is 10th position, then 100th position, then 1000th position, right? So this way, we are going to get N1, N2, N3. Are you getting me? N1, N2, N3 like this. Okay, so three choices for the unit position. However, three choices for the unit position because I want the even number, am I right? And three choices for the unit position, okay. <laughs> <laughs> However, for a fourth digit number on the thousand position cannot be zero because if thousand position is zero, zero multiplied by any of the numbers that is again zero. So it won't possible, it won't be possible. Hence, we consider the unit position into two parts. One is zero, one is not zero. That's what we are going to do. Let me, I think, let me share my screen. That will probably give you more idea. So Let me share my screen. Okay. So since the number of number must be E1, this is the example 2.17. 2.17. Since the number must be E1, right? We have only N1 equal to three position we have n1 equal to three positions or three choices, you can say, three choices for the unit position. For the unit position. 
let me write down these numbers the numbers given to you that is 0 1 2 then 5 6 and 9 that means i can go like this 1 2 3 4 like this right and we want four digit numbers. How many even four digit numbers can be formed from these numbers? This is my unit position. This is my unit position. I would like to consider this one as N1, right? Now what will happen guys that for four digit position, the thousand position kind of this position will not be zero. If this one is zero, you know that that doesn't make sense, right? Everything would be zero. That means this position could not be equal to zero. So that is one thing is sure. So here you can write, so I can write like this. However, for a four digit number, uh, let me write like this. However, for a four digit number, four digit number, the thousand position cannot be zero the thousand position, you can write like this in your own words, position cannot be equal to, mm, cannot be, in it. sorry, eraser, erase this part again, and position not equal to zero. Thousand position cannot be equal to zero. Right. Hence, we have considered the unit position into two parts. So my unit position N1 equal to unit position and in two parts, I would like to consider this one. In this unit position could be equal to zero, equal to zero, or that is not equal to zero. It could be equal to zero or it is not equal to zero. If the unit position is zero, then what will happen? Unit position is equal to zero. This means N1 equal to zero. I means this unit position equal to zero. If the unit position equal to zero, that is, we have n2 equal to five choices for the uh, for the thousand position, right? Total there are, look at over here, how many numbers are there? One, my gosh, one, two, three, why my pen is not moving? One, two, three, four, five, and six. Six numbers are there. Out of these six, one is fixed over here, that is the unit position. How many numbers are left out? Five numbers are left out. That means if I say this n2 equal to my thousands position, that means I have five numbers over here. And this two could be anything between this, uh, that there are, these are five means it's not five number, it's not five, it's five positions, five numbers, five positions. So it could be one, it could be two, it could be three, it could be six, it could be nine. Out of this, out of this five, any number will occupy this thousands position. That's what I mean. So N2 equal to five choices for the thousand position. So what N2, let me write over here five. I think that is better. Five choices for, five choices N2 equal to five choices for thousands position. So N3 equal to now one number is occupied over here. This zero is fixed. Out of these one, two, three, four, five, one number is already occupied over here. Right guys, n2 equal to five choices. Okay, so what should be my hundred position? This is my thousands position. Thousand, this is my hundred, hundred. This is my 10th and this is unit, n1. So this is my N2. Okay, so now four numbers are left out because one is already occupied over here. Out of this five, one is occupied over here. One is occupied over here. So one and two out of six numbers, two numbers are occupied. How many left out? Four. So here we have four. Same way. So out of suppose the uh, number six is over here. So we have one, two, five, and nine. So these four positions, any one will occupy over here. So this is my third position. And then after N2 equal to three, Suppose it takes two here, so one, five, and nine. Out of this one, five, and nine, one position will be over here. So there are three choices over here. That means I can go for n1 equal to, so total number of outcomes are n1, n2, n3, and n4. And that is equal to five times four times three times, five times four times, am I right? n1 equal to, this n1 equal to zero is just one position, right? Don't count this zero as zero, it's a one position. So N1 equal yes. one times 
one times, then five times, four times, three, and that is equal to 60. So for my first case in which this is my first case, I would like to write this one as first case. I would like to write this one as my second case. So my first case, this is my first case. First case. Now I would like to explain to you about the second case. Second case, what will happen? My n1 is not equal to zero, right? So therefore, in this case, we have total 60 for first case, 60 even four digit numbers. So 60 even four digit numbers, even four digit numbers. Okay, on the other end, if the unit position is not zero. So if n1 is not equal to zero. Unit position is not equal to zero, my second phase. Unit position is not equal to zero. What will happen, guys? If the unit position is not equal to zero, that means I can write n1 equal to, let me again put one, two, three, four, right? n1 is over here and I want the even number. So n1 is equal to two. Then after we have n2. Now, as I told you, this will also be not zero. So that means that means one of the numbers occupied from here to here, here to here. So one, two, three, four, five. Out of this five, suppose even number. So I want n2 equal to here. So naturally, my n3 will be equal to how many are left out now? Four. So n3 is equal to four because this position will not be zero. That one one position is occupied here, is occupied here, except zero. So one, two, five, one, two, five, six, nine out of five, one is occupied over here. Second position, because thousands place cannot be equal to zero, otherwise everything will be zero. So that means again, thousands place will take one of the numbers from here, which is different from this number. So I have one, suppose we have two numbers over here. That means I have one, five, six, nine, four choices are there. So N3 equal to four. But for N4, uh, sorry, N2 is equal to N2. But for N3, what will happen? This number may be zero because if suppose I have one number, five, zero, six, two, like this. So that makes sense. So this number could be zero. This number could be zero. This will not be zero. This will not be zero. So this must be different from zero. This must be different from zero, but zero may occupy, zero may enter in any one of these two cells. So that means I have four numbers over here. So I have taken one number out of this one, two, five, six, nine, five numbers. I took one number over here. That means four are left out. I took one number over here. Four are left out, out of four. Now, one number is coming from here. How many are left out? One, two, three, because two numbers are already have left out for one cell and second cell. So three numbers are left out, but zero can occupy this cell. It can occupy this cell too. That means again, we have four positions for N3. And once you have, suppose zero is over here, Zero is over here. Then after what is left out? One, only two are left out. So one, two, and five. Only three are left out. So my n one, n two, n three, and n four is equal to n four equal to three. That means my total choices are n one times n two times n three times n four is equal to two times four times four times three times, and that is equal to ninety six. So total number of C for our convenience, we divided our unit position into two parts, but unit, unit position could be zero because I can write like this, suppose two, five, six, zero, two, five, six, zero is again even number, one number. So unit position could be zero. It could not be zero, right? It could be any, any one of these two. So that's why we divided these two into two parts. So we have to add these parts, these two things, this 60 with unit position zero and 96 with unit position one zero. So I have to add these two. So 96 plus 60, that is equal to how much? 96 plus 60, that is equal to 156 are total positions. That could be your answer. Total positions for the four digit even numbers. So total there are 156 outcomes for even two digits, uh, sorry, four digits numbers. So that is the example 2.7. People are getting confused in this example because the in the book it is written in a word form. It's not given in the cell form like this, whatever I, I do the picture over here. So I would uh, say that if you can go for this type of picture, probably this type of picture, probably it will give you better idea. Okay, so now let's, let's go for the next one. 
I hope you understood this thing. So let me remove this slide. Let me save this one for our future. So let me save and now let me clear this one. So clear the picture. May I able to may I clear this one now? Yes, please. Okay, so let me clear this one. Clear drawings. Let me stop sharing and let me again go for my book. So my book says that this is the example as I told you. And now let's go for the permutation. So frequently we are interested in a sample space that contains as elements that contains as elements all possible orders or arrangement of group of objects. So whenever we are talking about the, that is called the permutation. So different arrangements are called the permutation. So permutation is nothing but the different arrangements. Different arrangements are called the permutation. Uh, you can see here permutation is nothing but the arrangements of all the objects in some specific order. And uh, we can consider like this, suppose I have A, B and C, three outcomes, I mean say three numbers, three letters, A, B and C. In this A, B and C, how many possible permutations are, uh, possible permutations are there? A, B, C, A, C, B. I think it is better if I write it down for you. Okay, so consider three letters. Suppose I consider three letters, A, B, and C. So possible possibilities are A, B, C, A, C, B. Then B, A, C, B, C, A. Then after C, A, B, C, B, A. Am I right? These six possibilities are there. Yes or no? So we see that there are six distinct arrangements and these arrangements are distinct distinct arrangements. Please, this distinct word makes a big difference. Distinct arrangements, six distinct arrangements. Um, using this, uh, our rule of multiplication, n1 times n2 and so, uh, and so on, I would say that we could arrive at the answer six without mutually listing the different orders of the following argument, right? Because we have three. And if you use your, uh, what we say, what is my N1 event? There are N1 equal to three choices, right? N1 equal to three choices. Why three choices? Because you have three numbers, A, B, and C. N1 equal to three choices for the first position. N1 equal to three choices for the first position, first position. That means my A is equal to, I can write A first or I can write B first or I can write C first. So you can see here, N1 equal to, there are three choices, either A or B or C for the first choices. <clears throat> no matter which letter is chosen, but N1 equal to three. There are N2 equal to, now how many are left out? B and C. So N2 equal to either B or C, right? So N2 equal to two choices, for the second position. Am I right? So if you think like this, oh my God. Uh, two choices for three position. So N3 equal to what is left out at the last point? It, once A and B are fixed, only one choice is there for C or A and C are fixed, B. So N3 equal to one choice for third position. Third position. So if you again apply your multiplication root L1 times N2 times N3 equal to three into two, and that is equal to six. So there are six ways. Then you can see over here, I mentioned six ways over here. So if you have like this, N1, N2, N3, so six, so this, these are called six permutations. Six permutations. And you can see none, none of them are repeated. Six permutations, none of them are repeated. But here, I just took the example for three events, three numbers, but you can exchange the same thing for N number of events, N number of distinct objects. So for N objects, N objects, you can see over three into two into one, that is equal to three. Other way around, you can write like this also, three factorial, because three factorial, that is the same thing, right? So same way, suppose I have N1 times N2 times N3 dot 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 up to uh, N1, N2, N3 up to uh, how many N events? I think it is better to write not in the form of N1, N2, N3, but let me write in this way. 
suppose I have my first event or first number out of these three. First choice is that is for maximum number three. Then numbers are reducing by one, three, two, one, like this. If I have n objects, my first choice is first for the first position, I have n choices. For the second position, I have one less. Third position, I have one less. Fourth position, I have one more less. And dot dot dot, and it will go up to two times one. So these are the for n objects. Here it was there were there were three objects. Now we have n objects, and this is given by n factorial. This is given by n factorial. And please make sure that zero factorial is always one. Zero factorial is always one. So number of permutation of n objects is always n factorial. Always keep in mind this thing. Let me put in the star the number of permutation permutation number of permutations p e r permutations of n objects of n objects is n factorial. Number of permutations of n objects that is equal to n factorial n factorial. <clears throat> now, the number of permutations of, suppose I would like to go for the another example for four objects, then what will happen? I would like to derive the formula now, formula for the permutation. So let me again save this slide and then after, oh sorry, and then after we can go for, let me clear this one. And let's go for this part. <clears throat> the number of permutation for four letters, suppose it is A, B, C, and D. Instead of three, now we have four, four letters. Then that is number of permutation for four letters, number of permutation just by our multiplication rule that is equal to four factorial and that is equal to 24 different ways to arrange these A, B, C and D. So you can write A, B, C, D or A, B, D, C or A then change A, C, B, D or A, B, D, C, something like that. So this way you can go up to 24 ways. Okay, now consider the number of permutations that are possible for taking two letters at a time out of this four. Two letters at a time, that means you can write A, B, any two letters. So two letters at a time. Then how many letters, oh my gosh. How many letters are there? You can write A, B, A, C, A, D, B, A. I'm sorry guys. A, B, A, C, A, D, B, A, then B, C, B, D. Then after I can write C, A, C, B, C, D, right? C, D. Then after I can write DA, DB, and DC. So these are different ways, DC. There are different ways that two letters at a time. If you want to write two letters at a time, you have these possibilities. Again, you can use go for the multiplication rule and we have two possibilities to fill up our N1 position. Right, two, pos two positions, we have two positions to fill with n1 equal to four choices and n2 equal to, so I can write like this, n1 times n2, n1 is equal to, as you know that there are four possibilities, n1 equal to four, right? Because first position could be anything, either A or B or C or D. First position could be anything, so it is four. Once the first position is occupied, then after you have for N2, second one, that means it could be now either uh, B, or you can go for C, or you can go for D. Look at here, so N2 equal to three. So there are 12 different permutations. 12 different permutations. 12 different permutations. Same way for N distinct object, See, I just restricted myself for two out of four. Just two, 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 like this. These two I would like to write in general, suppose R cells, R number of cells from N distinct objects taken R at a time. So in general, for N distinct subjects taken 
are at a time and distinct subjects taken r at a time can be arranged in the form of can be arranged as n times n minus 1 n minus 2 because now we are not talking, not taking on all n subjects we are taking out of n out of 4 i chose out of 4 these are 4 out i chose just 2 just 2 like this out of 4 i choose 2 or out of suppose 10 i am choosing suppose 4 like this so r is always less than n r is always less than n so that is possible n n minus 1 n minus 2 dot 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 up to n minus in the bracket r minus 1 n minus r minus 1. So if you have n distinct subjects taken r at a time out of this n, if you are taking r, some less number than n, it could be anything out of 100, suppose you are taking only 60, 65. So n distinct subjects taken r at, r at a time can be arranged, can be arranged in this way, n1, n2, n3 up to n minus r plus 1. Some people write like this also n1 minus 1 minus 2 dot 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 n minus r because minus minus plus so plus 1 n minus r plus 1 like this too. And we represent this product by the symbol. This can be represented in the form of the symbol and that symbol is called because we are working for the permutation so it is permutation out of n objects we are selecting r so it is written as npr and the formula is n factorial divided by n minus r factorial, n minus r factorial, n factorial divided by n minus r factorial. So number of permutations of n distinct objects taken r at a time that is given by n factorial over n minus r factorial. That is the definition of permutation. Definition of permutation. When one very standard example, I would say that suppose in one year, three awards, research award, teaching award, and service award is awarded and will be given to a class of 25 graduates. Now 25 graduates means my N1 equal to graduate people, 25 students. 25 graduate students in a statistics department. If each student can, each student can receive at most one, order, uh, one award. Each student, those who are awarded, each student receive at most, means at the most, just one award, not other way. That means all your N1, N2 are distinct. Your elements are distinct. They are not same, please. One is getting one award, suppose research award, that means the same guy is not going to get either teaching award or the service award. So that is the meaning. I repeat, in one year, three awards will be given to a class of 25 graduate students in a statistic, statistic department. If each student can receive at most one award, how many possible selection? At most one award, that means it says that permutation with distinct elements, how many three awards are there? That means my R is equal to, my N is equal to 25, N equal to 25 and R equal to three. So 25 P three that is given by, replace this one in the formula. So it is 25 factorial, 25 minus R means 25 minus three factorial, that is equal to 25 factorial divided by 22 factorial. You can use the factorial notation 25 multiplied by 24 multiplied by 23 multiplied by 22 and then factorial divided by 22 factorial. This will get cancelled out. If you use your calculator and take the multiplication of these two numbers 25 multiplied by 24 multiplied by 23. So that is the total outcome. Probably that number would be something 13,800. 13,800. So these are the possible outcomes that people are getting the or total number of permutations of getting the order uh, award. So that is the permutation. Now I would like to go for very important example, very important example. And then after we will go for the repeated because here all this for all this example, my n number of elements are distinct. Then after we are going to say when, what will happen when we have repetition of N, right? And that will lead you towards the combination, lead you towards the combination. Good. So let me take one example, one example now. Uh, that example is a president and a treasurer can be chosen from a student club consisting of 50 people. 
Uh, let me just remove this slide. Let me remove this one. And then clear it. Okay. So my next example is example number 29 in your book. Oh my bad. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So um, stop sharing and let me again share my whiteboard. So suppose I have example number now, 2.19, example 2.19. Try to look at this one very carefully. Listen to me very carefully. A student and a treasurer, oh, sorry, I'm sorry, a president and a treasurer are to be chosen from a student club consisting of 50 people. We have 50 people out of this 50 people, we are going to select a president and a treasurer. Treasurer. Okay. How many different choices of offers are possible if, my first question, how many different choices are possible? My first question, there are no restriction, no restriction. Means out of this 50, anyone could be a president, anyone could be a treasurer, right? There is no restriction. That means two positions you want to fill up using this 50 means it's very simple, n equal to, n equal to 50 and two positions, my R is equal to two. So 50 P2, that is equal to 50 factorial or 50 minus two, that is equal to 48, 48 factorial. And that is equal to 50 multiplied by 49. And that is equal to 49 multiplied by five is 245 and one zero. So there are 2450, 2450 positions if there is no restrictions, right? Uh, 2450 outcomes, possibilities to select a president as well as a treasurer in a class of 50, in a club of 50. My second part, this is my A part, my B part. B part says that now there is some restriction. A will serve only if he's a president. Suppose one guy A, only if he is a president, only if president. A will serve only if he is chosen as a president. If he is not chosen as a president, he doesn't want to work as a treasurer, right? So he will serve only if he is a president. Now guys, please pay attention. Since A will serve only if he is a president, we have two situations. Either A is selected as a president. How many possibilities are there? If A is selected as a president, if A is selected as a president, as a president, A is selected as a president, that means we yield 49 possible outcomes for a treasurer's position, right? That means then 49 possible positions or outcomes for a treasurer position for a treasurer position. If A is selected as a president, uh, president, 49 positions are there for the treasurer position. Or what will happen? This is uh, my first choice, one part. Or I, okay, let, let me write one. My second choice is offers are selected from, uh, or what will happen? Or Officers are selected from remaining 49 people without A. Suppose A is not selected as a president because he doesn't want to work for the other position, right? So if A is selected as a president, that is fine. If A is not selected as a president, then what will happen? We have officers are selected from the remaining 49 positions because now he's gone. So officers are 
selected for remaining 49 people or you can say members without a right without a because a is gone now which is the number now what will happen for here n equal to 49 n equal to 49 right and uh, my r equal to 2 because still we are looking for one position for a president one is for treasurer so r equal to 2 so 49 p2 that is equal to 49 minus 48 and that is equal to 49 48 i think uh, you are going to get 2 3 5 2 so these are the possibilities of getting the president and a treasurer if a is not selected if a is selected you don't have any problem if a is selected that means there are remaining 49 positions without a remaining 49 positions without a but if a is selected uh, a is not selected these are the positions so if you combine these two that will give the answer of b if you combine these two you're going to get 49 plus 2, 3, 5, 2. That means it is 2, 4, 0, 1. Total number of choices. Total number of choices. I'm sorry. Why I'm getting like this? Total number of choices. That is my part B. Now, part C says that B and C will serve together or not at all. That means two guys. Two guys, suppose one guy is B, another guy is C. These two guys, they have decided to work together. Otherwise, they are not going to work. <laughs> That's fantastic. B and C will serve together. B and C will serve together or not at all. Not at all. B and C will serve together or not at all. B and C will serve together or not at all. When B and C, the number of selection when B and C serve together, how many is for, for together? So number of, uh, I can write like this, this is part C. Uh, the number of selection, the number of selection when B and C work together that is equal to two right because one will get the president position one will get the treasurer position so just two right otherwise they are not going to work the number of selection when both b and c are not chosen so the number of position when b and c are not chosen that is equal to yes please now they are not chosen means both are gone now right because they want to work together so my n equal to 48 out of 50 and still i need to fill up two positions my r is equal to 2 so it is 48 p2 that is equal to 48 factorial divided by 48 minus 2 that is equal to 46 factorial so my answer is 48 multiplied by 47 and that is equal to 2258. 2258 two, positions are there for which this 2258. But again, we have two possibilities. One is here, one is here. That means number of positions B and C will work together. It could be possible that both are selected. One is as a president, one is as a treasurer. That is two. If not, then 2258. So total number of positions, therefore, total outcomes or total number of choices are 2 plus 2258 that is equal to 2260. Am I right? I think, I'm sorry. Uh, I think I made, just use your calculator. I think it could be 6 over here because 47, 8s are 56, right? So it has to be 6 over here. So here it is 2258. 225. Eight. Just using calculation, calculation error, please. So these are these are the maximum possibilities. And the last part is D and E will not solve together. D and E will not. Now other two guys. Now here the 
Connection is different. It was different that both could both both can work together or they cannot work. But now D and E will not solve together. Now there are some conflicts between D and E. And suppose they said that we don't want to work with this guy, or other one says that I don't want to work with D. E says I don't want to work with E. Like this. So something like that. So let me just go through my last part D that D and C or D and E, I would say, will not solve together. Will let me take another slide. So I can go like this. Let me save this one. Okay, and let me clear the picture and I can go for the another slide. So my D part says that B and D and E, D and E will not solve together. Will not solve together. D and E will not solve together. Okay. So naturally, the number of I can just start like I can start like this. The number of selections when D serves as an officer but not E. Uh, the number of position. The number of position. When, or number of selection, you can say position or selection or selection when D serves but or D serves but not E. D serves as an officer but not E. And that is given by is yes, two positions are there. Two positions are there and how much, how many? Number of selections when D serves as an officer, right? D serves as an officer but not E. That means there are 48 people. Right, 48, two times 48, where two, well, let me write it down, that is equal to 96. This two is nothing but, this two is the number of position D can take, 48 is number of selection where other officers from the remaining people, right? Two is the number of position D can take, number of position D can take because D can be now president or a treasurer. Once he is a president, he is a president. That means naturally that uh, E will not work. So E is out of picture. He is one position is gone for the president. How many are left out? 48 positions are left out for the position of treasurer. For the position of treasurer. Right? So two is the number of position D can take and 48 is the number of selection of the other officers from the remaining people in the club, except E. So number of selection when E serves as an officer, but not D is also the same. Number of position when D serves, but not E. Now, same way, the number of position or number of selections when E serves, but not D is the same thing. Two times 48, that is equal to 96. Here, two is the number of position E can take and 48 because now E has gone. So 48, that's the number for the position for the treasurer. Position for the treasurer. Right, guys? So we have 96 and 96. The number of selection when E, when D and E are not chosen. Now it may be possible because they don't want to work together. So it may be possible that D and E, they are not working. They both are gone. So that means it is exactly the same as the previous number when D and E are not chosen. The number of position, number of position when D and E are not chosen, are not chosen. So naturally that is, 
because now my n is equal to 48 my r is equal to i have to select two positions from remaining 48 people so n p 2 that is 48 multiplied by 47 i gave you that number 48 multiplied by am i right total number of positions uh, that is equal to i gave you that number that was in the last example 20 to 56 right 20 to 56 so therefore the total number of outcomes total number of choices how many total number of choices are there one is this one second one is this one and third one is this one so total number of choices total number of choices when d and v uh, d and e will not solve together that is equal to 2 times 96 96 plus 96 you can write like this that is better 96 plus 96 plus 2256 and that is equal to something 2256 96 plus 96 to 256 that is equal to how much eight and then count it four and then four and two so 2000 2448 2448 2448 total positions outcomes for which d and e will not solve together d and e will not solve together if somebody says like this this is the complete description the whole the complete description but somebody says that no i just want a quick answer yes you can this problem can also be visualized like if D and E cannot solve together in two ways, right? How many total positions in A part by part A by part A? What will happen? Uh, there were no restriction. There were no restriction. That means I had out of uh, 50 club members, two positions are being selected. That means it is 2450. Out of this 2450, D and E, e then uh, they cannot work together, right? So, minus two because D and E cannot work together. So let's remove this one because if they can work together, there are two positions. So let's remove this part. So it is two, four, four, eight. So both the ways we are getting the same answer. This is a short answer. So that's what we mean by the permutation. So I think I explained to you the permutations with distinct elements, distinct numbers. Now what will happen, suppose you have the repetition of n. Here it was a distinct elements, and now we have a repetition, right? Now we have repeated or repetition of n. Repetition of n. So number of permutation of n objects arranged in a circle. Let me save this one and let me then after. clear the slide and uh, I think it's not possible for us to cover the whole chapter today. So I'm going to wind up in next five minutes and maybe we are going to take rest of the things of the same article in our next slide. So keep your eyes open. You will find the next lecture based on the same article. We will continue with the same part. Let, let me give you little things and we'll and we will stop over here. So number of permutation of n objects arranged in a circle. Number of permutation of n objects in a circle in a circle that is equal to n minus one factorial. It is something like this. Suppose you have one, two, three, and four guys in a circle like this, one, two, three, and four. One is over here, two is over here, C is over here, three. Suppose A, B, A, B, C, and D. So if you change just one shift, if you change that A has to shift over here, A is shifting over here. That means other three, other three, there are, you are just changing the position of A and there, there is just changing of other three guys. Automatically, they are good. This B will be over here, C will be over here, and D will be over here, something like that. Or D will be over here. D will be over here. But there is a circular form. So you are making change with one, but it is affected for other three guys. So that's why it is one less. So number of permutations in a circle and objects in a circle, that means it is always one less. That is called n minus one factorial. So the number of distinct permutation, number of distinct permutation, always keep in mind these things so far we are working only with distinct numbers. So number of distinct permutations, the number of distinct permutation of n things or of n objects, 
of n objects of which n1 are of one kind of which n1 are of one kind n2 are of second kind n3 are of third kind and so on and nk that is equal to kth kind kth kind and that is given by n factorial over n1 factorial n2 factorial n3 factorial dot 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 nk factorial and k factorial. <clears throat> so that is the number of distinct permutation of n things in which n1 are of one kind, second kind, third kind, and fourth kind. I can give you one example. As per example, suppose in a college football training session, a defensive coordinate needs to have 10 players standing in a row. He wants 10 players. 10 players in a row, standing in a row. Out of these 10 players, among these 10 players, there are one freshman, two sophomore, one freshman, two uh, sophomore, four juniors, and suppose I say three seniors, three seniors. So one, two, four, and three. If like this, this n1 plus n2 dot 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 up to nk that is equal to n. Look at over here, n1, n2, n2 up to nk. So 1, 4, 1, 2, 4, and 3, 4 plus 3, 7 plus 2, 9 plus 1, 10. So you are getting your n back. So that is given by n factorial. That is my n. This is your n. And this is your n1, n2, n3, and n4. So n1 factorial, that is 1 factorial, 2 factorial, 4 factorial, and 3 factorial. If you use the factorial notation, use your calculator, you're going to get the answer. So these are the different ways of getting the, or selecting the people, 10 people in a row, or 10 students in a row, 10 players in a row, out of which one is from, see, one is, one is from face freshman means you are allowed to choose just one from freshman. That means these other positions will not be filled up by freshman. Two from sophomore, other positions will not be filled up by either freshman, junior, or senior. Four for C juniors means other three positions will not be filled up by, um, it's this, this, except juniors, other field, this position will be filled up only by juniors. Same way over here, senior. That means I would say that all my N1, N2, N3 are distinct. So N1, N2, N3, N4, all these four are distinct. All these four are distinct, right? And that's the meaning I'm, I've been telling you that we are working with the distinct numbers. Okay, so this is a last example and we'll stop. So my last slide and we can stop over here. Another example is suppose I use all the vowels a e i o u and if i ask you to make a partition like this of four together a e i o u and, and one separate four together and one separate how many possibilities are there a e i o that is in uh, one part and u in the second part this is my first set then after I, another set is i can say a i o u in one and in second part i have E. My third possibility is because I'm making a cell off out of this n equal to a e i o u. I'm going to make one in four elements. My second is in one element. So I would say n one and n two, something like this, right? My third possibility is e i o u e i o u and a. My fourth possibility is yes a e o u and i. My fifth possibility is a, E, I, U, and O, right? A, E, I, O, I, U, and O. So I can make this type of arrangements and you can see over here, here I have four. So totally it was five. And then after I have four and four. So I can write in this form. So that is nothing but five factorial divided by four factorial times one factorial. And whatever the number that is equal to five. So where the top number represents the total number of elements this is, this is the total number of elements. Total number of elements. And the bottom number represent, you can see over here, the number of elements going into each cell. This one and this one. Number of elements going into 
each cell, going into each cell. So that is given like this, five factor like this. So in general, I can write, so in general, let me write it down like this, in general, in general, suppose you have n number of elements and you have cell n1, n2 up to nr cells. So that is given in the form of n factorial over n1 factorial, n2 factorial dot dot up to nr factorial, where again n1 plus n2 dot 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 nr, that is equal to total number of n. If you count all these things, your number back. And instead of these different cells, you can see over here, n1, n2 up to nr. If you are making just two cells, if you are making two cells, that is thing, but that's the difference between combination and permutation, that is nothing but the combination. So two cells, that is the combination. We are going to see this thing next time. Thank you so much. And uh, let me stop over here. Just keep your eyes open. Stop sharing and let me stop my recording too.